a little bit about competitors. Um, the one of the largest competitors uh, that we really try to design this to compete with was uh, at the time it was Fluke uh, AirCheck G2, but now I believe it's Net Ally uh, AirCheck G2. The biggest difference here, and, and this is an external piece of uh, it's a, it's an entire device really. The biggest comparison or difference here that I like to bring up is the cost. Um, I was able to find this cost on uh, Amazon, and this is a, a deal just for the unit itself. If you get the full kit, you're looking at about three grand plus, whereas the Wi Spy Air is about $9.99, just under $1,000. Um, you know, one thing that's really important to, to know is that the Wi Spy Air uses your mobile device, right? So you're able to actually you're able to actually use a device that you're already familiar with. You understand how to use it. There's no learning curve, whereas you kind of have to learn how to use the AirCheck G2, and it's a bit clunky, honestly. Um, you know, they, they, they try and design their own device, whereas you're familiar with your phone, so you know how to use that. And uh, all you have to do is just kind of, you know, connect the Wi Spy Air to the back of your mobile device, and it almost fits in your pocket, which is re really, really nice. Interestingly enough, it's uh, there's no AX chipset in the AirCheck G2, and so um, I, I don't believe it will display AX networks, whereas the Wi-Fi Air uh, will absolutely display AX networks for you. Um, just because, and this brings up my next point, we regularly update the application, so we're able to see, we're able to make those changes if there are. Um, you know, any, any new standards that are uh, revealed or any new standard amendments, right, that are amended to the, uh, to Wi-Fi, uh, we're, we're going to be able to update the application to show those types of things. And of course, any feedback you guys have, we're going to try and update that as quickly as possible. As far as I know, I'm not sure, I'd, but I don't believe the AirCheck uh, has any update capabilities that I'm aware of. Uh, another interesting thing when I was researching the AirCheck is in order to see clients around it, you actually have to be associated to that network and you can only see those clients on that network. The Wi Fi Air, on the other hand, will actually see all nearby clients. It's a passive packet capture adapter built into it. So if there's any clients that it can see that this antenna can see, it's going to show it whether you're associated to the network or not. Um, it's an external piece of hardware um, that uh, you, you don't have to be associated to it. And in fact, your device has its own chipset that it's associated to. Um, and, you know, because Apple and Google have these API restrictions on the hardware, you have to have an external piece of hardware like this, and it can actually tell you what your device is associated to, which I'll show you in a, in a second. One thing that the uh, uh, AirCheck G2 does have over the Wi-Spy Air is it does have the RJ45 ports for ethernet checking. So uh, we focus on the wireless medium here at MediGeek. We only focus on Wi-Fi, um, so we don't have any cable checking uh, capabilities. Um, so if you need that, then maybe the, the AirCheck would be the tool for you. Uh, the other kind of competitors close to the same space is the Echo House Sidekick. So I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, again, the price is the biggest difference here. Again, Wi Spy Air is just under a thousand dollars. The Echo House Sidekick standalone, just for the actual Sidekick, is like thirty one hundred dollars. The software is is something you'll have to consider, and that's almost another three thousand um, dollars. So you're really looking at almost a five to six thousand dollar investment for uh, the Sidekick. Um, again, the Wi-Spy Air is, is small enough to fit in your pocket. I believe the Sidekick, they want you to kind of strap to the side there. So it's different form factors for sure. Um, again, there's no AX chipset in the Sidekick. I think they, they built those with just the AC uh, chipset before the AX amendment was officially ratified. And so there's no AX chipset in the Sidekick. Um, so I think they should still display AX though. I'm, I'm sure that that's, that's something that they, they can still do is display. So I certainly won't claim that. Um, one thing to keep in mind is the Sidekick is a site survey tool. So if you need to do <clears throat> predictive heat mapping, um, if you need to do, uh, you know, import a floor plan and that sort of site survey job to be done, then the Sidekick and Echo is probably the tool of choice for you. We focus more on post-deployment verification. Um, and that's what the Wi-Spy Air really, really specializes in. The Echo Sidekick, of course, does have a higher fidelity spectrum analyzer, and I will show you some examples of this. Um, you know, it's basically an enterprise-grade access point on your hip, right? And you certainly pay for that. Um, but uh, in, in my opinion, about 90 to 95 percent of the jobs to be done, you don't need to have that high of quality spectrum analyzer. Um, really, you can get the job done with Wi-Fi by Air, Wi-Fi by DBX, something lower quality. As long as you can see it on the spectrum, you know it's there, right? If you can see the 802.11 uh, information, this next slide here kind of shows an example uh, of what the Sidekick offers, right? You can see the nice little uh, individual subcarriers, and you can see the divot. But as you can see, the Wi-Fi by Air shows the exact same thing. It's pretty obvious this is some Wi-Fi activity. You can even see the little uh, null carrier uh, uh, kind of 
it's pivot right here, or divot right here. I mean, and uh, so you can really kind of uh, uh, compare the two and say, you know, do you really need to spend six grand to be able to see uh, Wi-Fi interference in that fidelity? I would say if you're a lab engineer, um, absolutely. If you're some sort of network, uh, um, you know, professional and you're in a lab environment and you, you kind of need to see that clarity in that perspective, then absolutely that might be the uh, tool of choice for you.